So I guess they're giving us more qualifying matches for the Mae Young Classic. I'm alright with that. What's going on everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pals, Pass Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here with another qualifying match for the Mae Young Classic. This one actually took place on this week's episode of NXT, so going forward, what I've decided I'm going to do, I'm going to keep these videos separate. As you can see probably on my uh, on my YouTube, I've got a separate, uh, what do you call it, a separate category, a separate playlist for all the Mae Young Classic stuff. So if they do qualifying matches on NXT, or if for some reason they do qualifying matches as part of an episode of Raw or an episode of SmackDown, I'm going to omit them from that review and I'm going to give them their own video partially because I'm excited about this tournament and I think they deserve their own spotlight but also because you know how am I supposed to put an episode of Smackdown or uh, God forbid an episode of Raw in the middle of my Mae Young Classic uh, playlist and all that sort of thing also it, it, it does feel special and it is sort of encapsulated from anything else that happens on the show much like the the UK tournament uh, and the UK division competitors that do come and do compete on uh, on NXT, but they still sort of exist in a bubble all on their own. So I guess the May Young Classic is going to exist in a bubble on its own on this channel. Thank you for the response that we got for the first one with uh, Bianca Belair and Aaliyah. Um, Fortunately, that was a much longer match than the one we're about to talk about, and I had a little bit more investment in both of those women for various reasons. But, uh, we're gonna get into this. Uh, I guess they're trying to promote the shit out of this thing, is it's not going to be a weekly show on the network. They are, like we've mentioned before, they are going to be dropping it as sort of Netflix series in chunks on demand, which I'm, uh, as you guys know, not particularly a fan of. But, this week's qualifying match brings us Vanessa Bourne versus Jamie Heishi. Now, Jamie Heishi, I could have sworn, has been on NXT before, in, in, a, in a job or in an enhancement uh, capacity, but I do believe I've seen her before. I could be wrong, that's, that's most likely a thing that happens on this channel a lot. Vanessa Bourne comes out first, and she's got a very sort of rockish type of, like, there's no extravagance, there's no extra costuming, or we know there's no pyro in the NXT arena no pyro anywhere in WWE anymore apparently but she's got a very rockish theme uh, if you're like me if you're a fan of Buck Cherry the the theme is almost sort of an understated Buck Cherry esque uh, entrance theme she's got a very diva attitude towards her and when uh, when I say that I don't mean the old school WWE Barbie doll definition of a diva I just mean uh, that whole like hands in the air come soak me in love me look at me that that type of vibe I'm fucking awesome check me out type thing Jamie Hayes she a little bit more upbeat gotta love the ring gear on her because the top part of her ring gear was black but the bottom part was uh sort of iron man esque uh much like you know um alexa bliss uh a lot of the time had that freddy krueger type of uh type of vibe to her ring get up but occasionally she did have the the iron man thing and i think uh I think uh, Bailey did the same thing at one point. Very, very similar sort of idea, and it's all good. And the competitors do their best to point out that she's a former fitness competitor as well as being a high school wrestler. And they specifically point out she was the only female on their high school wrestling team that ever went to a national championship. So very... Um, very good job by the commentators. Like I guess it's still very strange for me to be talking about Mae Young Classic stuff, which is going to be commentated by JR and Lita, which is going to be fucking awesome. Um... But it's very awkward that we're starting off the tournament being just commentated by the typical NXT group. Now, as you guys know, Nigel McGuinness and Mauro Ronaldo, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, and I love what they do on NXT. I could do without Percy Watson. Uh, that's an overstated statement on itself. But um, it, it, it is a little disconnected. But also, along with Jim Ross and along with uh, Lita commentating, at the Mae Young Classic. We've also recently heard that Medusa is going to be doing all the backstage uh, pre- and post-match interviews for the Mae Young Classic, so that's also cool. I, I guess she's she's basically taking the uh, the Corey Graves position. If you remember when uh, Corey Graves was the backstage guy at the uh, CWC, uh, not only doing some interviews, but also keeping us up to date with the, with the brackets, etc. So, good job for her. You got three Hall of Famers involved in this tournament so far, and they're not even the ones that 
that are wrestling. So it's an exciting time to be alive. So let's get into this match. Like I say, it's not a very not a very long match. So collar and elbow tie from the waist lock by Bourne and a takedown by Heishi. Sunset flip by Bourne. Running punt to the spine by Bourne that just it just makes you curl watching it there's certain things there's just certain things like you know you get a Ric Flair knife edge chop and, and other things like that there's certain things we know it's a work we know it's scripted we know it's predetermined but these people get hurt and the running punt to the spine was just it, it made you it made you curl is the only is the only uh, way I can describe it stalling sidewalk slam by Heishi showing a bit of power because she didn't drop her right away and a posted surfboard awesome Snapmare and two-handed chops by Bourne. Now I had to go watch this again because the when the commentator said chops, uh, I thought I had missed something because it looks like it looked like she gave her a chop to the throat, but I was wrong on that one. But it's pretty damn close. Uh, hits her with a couple of clotheslines and then she hits what I can only describe as a cradle-style black hole slam. Because she goes and she hooks the head and she hooks the leg. Uh, if you can imagine Becky Lynch when she goes to do the Beck Bexploder. She sort of hooks her in that position, but instead of throwing her overhead, she sort of spins and turns it into a side slam. And apparently that's her finishing maneuver. So Vanessa Bourne wins. She goes on, along with Bianca Belair, to the, uh, to the Mae Young Classic. Jamie Heishi, if I'm wrong, and if we have never seen her before, great outing by her. I hope NXT picks her up, at least uh, in a in a developmental enhancement uh, jobber type of uh, type of spot because she's she's good and she's and she's not the biggest chick in the world, but she had a, in this short match she had a lot of chance to show some power, some versatility, etc. And she took a ridiculous punt to the spine and kept going so that she's got that going for her as well so Vanessa Bourne goes on to the Mae Young Classic along with Bianca Belair we're gonna see how many more of these uh, Mae Young Classic qualifying matches if we get more on NXT I'm gonna do a video like this as I said if they throw more up directly to the WWE's YouTube channel and I'm made aware of them uh, I'll uh, I'll be taking a look at those as well hope you guys are liking this so far I've been Spaz your YWC reality check subscribe up there talk down there start a conversation keep all these conversations going don't be a stranger I'll talk to each and every last one of you later but for right now I am tagging out bye guys Don't shine,